there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you can make it because today we are going to be talking about the ever so popular, I'll be frank, from Chicago, the Vienna beef sausage famously used in the Chicago hot dog, which we'll also be making in this video. And I want to know in the comment section below, what is your experience with emulsified sausages? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Because I gotta tell you, they can be incredibly challenging to make. Some would argue that they are the most technically challenging and difficult sausages to make in the world. They do require special equipment and a special set of skills. And although I can't do nothing for you when it comes to the special equipment by the end of this video, hopefully you will have a better understanding as to the skills required in order to perfectly make this sausage. Now, just a reminder, through this show, we're gonna be giving away a lot of prizes, and I'm talking some pretty spectacular gifts. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss a single episode, but if you happen to come in late, always check the pinned comment. In the pinned comment, I'm gonna make sure to update what's being given away, how you can enter, and when that drawing is supposed to be held, so you never miss out on any of the prizes, because as it stands right now, there's some pretty incredible things up for grabs. I don't want you to miss out. Check the pinned comment while you're there. Give it a thumbs up and drop me a little note. How's that sound? All right, folks, let's make the Vienna beef and the Chicago hot dog. Let's get cracking. Let's start with the casing. We're going sheep casing with this one. And I think 22, 24 is an appropriate size for a hot dog. You can honestly use whatever size casing you want. We got these from the sausage maker. They are grade A casing, so they are rated for emulsified sausages. And this has just been rinsed and flushed and soaking in water overnight. Now, just so you know, one thing I always add to the water is a little baking soda right in there. That's going to make that water alkalinized and it's gonna make everything nice and slippery. That means you're gonna be able to get it on the horn super easy, reduce casing blowouts. It's absolutely brilliant. Let's set that to the side. As far as the meat goes, this is a 100% beef sausage. Remember, this is our version of the Vienna beef used for the Chicago hot dog, and the cut of meat that we're using is a very lean cut coming from the bottom round. The fat, comes from the brisket. My advice here would be to stick to your higher quality cuts. You're going to end up with a much better sausage and a lot less problems. So lean meat, beautiful fat. And what we're going to do through this process is keep the fat and the meat separate. Right now, I'm just cutting up the brisket fat and weighing it until I get to the appropriate measurement. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the beef. There will be a recipe link in the description box below that has all of what we're talking about here written out in full detail. But you need to know that the emulsified sausage, and it doesn't matter which one you make, kind of plays by a different set of rules. So you can't really approach the emulsified sausage recipe the same way you would approach a regular sausage recipe. The ratio of lean to fat is different. The types of meat that you use are going to be different. The amount of moisture that you use is going to be different and how you calculate it. Same thing with the salt. And so there's a lot of different factors that play into the emulsified sausage in order for it to come out absolutely brilliant, which is what we're going to try to produce here today. Now, as far as my meat and fat goes, everything is going to get cut up into relatively small pieces. Here in a minute, we're going to grind all the meat and the fat separate. Basically, we're doing the heavy lifting. I don't want my food processor to work harder than it absolutely has to. So there's our beef. Our fat is already cut up and it's now time to chill it before we grind it. One thing you will know, there's this very common theme when making an emulsified sausage is temperature control. You do want to make sure that you manage your temperature accordingly. At this stage, the temperature that we're looking for is under 34 Fahrenheit, basically partially frozen. So we're going to stick this into the freezer, let it get nice and frosty while we prepare our spices. And the first ingredient is curing salt number one, Instacure number one. Next up, we've got a little salt. We're going to come back with some white pepper, granulated garlic, and then we're going to add some smoked paprika. Now you can mix and match and change this however you want. We also have coriander, mustard powder, onion powder, nutmeg. I'm also going to add a cure accelerator called sodium erythorbate. You can also use ascorbic acid. And then we're going to use a binder called potato starch. Any binder works for this recipe. You can use nonfat dry milk. You can use phosphates. It really doesn't matter. So there we go. Notice that we're keeping the binder separate from the spices. Spices go in first, binder goes in last. Okay, our meat is properly chilled. Everything is under 34 Fahrenheit. And now it's time to grind. We're going to do a triple grind on this meat and fat, starting with a 10 millimeter plate. And the final two grinds are gonna be on our smallest plate, which is a four and a half millimeter plate. If you happen to have a three millimeter plate, that would be even better. So let's get this ground up and I'll get right back to you. All 
right, folks, there we have it, a triple grind. And it's totally okay if you get a little fat in the meat or a little meat in the fat. Not that big a deal. You just want to keep the majority of it separate. And just remember, in between each grind, I did refreeze it and kept the temperature under 34 degrees the entire time. Now, just so that you could see where we're at, because temperature is so important, we're going to pull out our thermopin. You're going to see me pull this unit out constantly through this process. And we are at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, absolutely perfect. Let's talk about ice. Ice is a very important part of this recipe. We're not talking about cold water, we're talking about ice. And notice that it's partially broken up, already crunched up. You don't wanna use whole pieces from like your ice tray. You wanna chop it all up, okay? So now that we've got everything ground three times, we've got our spices, we've got our ice ready, let's go ahead and chop this up and begin the process of emulsification. This is where you need a good food processor. If you do not have a high quality commercial grade food processor, I wouldn't even attempt this recipe. Notice the meat is at 29 degrees Fahrenheit. During this initial stage, we do not want the temperature of our meat to rise above 38 Fahrenheit, okay? And I'm gonna put all this in the recipe link below. The reason being is because this initial step is all about protein extraction. And protein extraction happens most effectively under 38, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So we wanna keep it ultra cold. Another thing that you need to know is that I just recently sharpened the blades on this food processor. And if you do not have sharp blades on your food processor, I wouldn't even attempt this recipe because you're gonna end up whipping the meat instead of chopping it, okay? And you wanna absolutely have razor sharp blades, otherwise it's not gonna work. Now, if you look inside the bowl, the blade is spinning, but the meat is kind of along the wall. What we wanna do is we want to scrape down that meat, and you're gonna end up doing this several times through the process. Be careful, because if your blades are razor sharp, then you can easily get cut. So we're just gonna scrape that down, take the temperature real quick. Remember, under 38 Fahrenheit, and it looks like we're still pretty good. We're in the high 20s. Let's go ahead and continue to chop. And we're just gonna monitor how that meat acts, okay? What we wanna do is add a little bit of ice at this step, maybe about a third of your ice. And what that's gonna do is that's going to keep everything super cold, but it's also gonna help loosen up that batter and start to turn it into a paste, all right? We've been chopping now for about 20 seconds. Notice the meat is on the side of the food processor bowl. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to continue to scrape it down. And you're gonna repeat this process several times during the emulsification stage. And each time, the particle size of your meat is gonna get smaller and smaller. So let's go ahead and put the top back on, give it another chop. And what we're looking for is for that meat to kind of form like a dough ball to where it's kind of slinging around the center. There we go, see it? Just like that. This right here is what I call phase two, and it's also called the appliance killer because it puts a lot of stress on your food processor, which is why we need to add a little more ice. I'm gonna add another third of my ice. So we still have about a third left. We're gonna save that to the end. Let's go ahead and chop more. And you're gonna notice that that ball of meat that's circling is gonna slowly start to loosen up as the ice is beginning to melt, and it's gonna turn into somewhat of a paste. Now, if you do not have a high quality food processor, this will burn up your motor. I'll tell you right now, this is a step that kills most people's food processor. Let me take you in a little closer to what this should look like. Notice that it's nice and pasty. We still have a little ways to go. And so I'm gonna scrape it down and put that top back on it. If you wanna take the temp, no problems there. Keep it under 38 Fahrenheit, but usually after an ice addition, it's already gonna be pretty cold. So let's go ahead and chop another 15, 20 seconds. Look at that, it's starting to turn into an even finer paste. Check the temp, looks absolutely beautiful. All right. So at this stage, I think we're good to go. Our meat has been finely chopped. We've got awesome protein extraction. It's super sticky. It's time to add our fat. One thing to know about the fat when making an emulsified sausage is that it does not need to be super, super cold. Matter of fact, you can keep it at the refrigerator temperature and it'll be fine. And now let's go ahead and chop for another 15 to 20 seconds just to kind of get everything incorporated. Now that we've added the fat, we're moving into phase three of the emulsification process, which means that we now have to keep the temperature below 55 Fahrenheit. All right. So that temperature ceiling has increased, but we do not want to get it above 55. Otherwise it could split the emulsion. Let's take the temperature after about 20 seconds of chopping. We're in the low forties. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and add our binder. And then we're going to add the rest of our ice. 
Now notice there's a lot of little white particles of fat. The goal here is to chop everything up so finely that it looks like one homogeneous mass. We're going to chop for another 15 to 20 seconds. Remember, our blades are ultra sharp, and we're looking for that mass to be homogeneous, super sticky, and a little loose. Let's take our temperature. Remember, our goal is 55 degrees. We don't want to be above 55. And look at that. 54.9 couldn't have asked for a better stopping point. Unfortunately, emulsified sausages are very unforgiving. And so if you screw up somewhere in the process, you won't know until you cook it. And then by that point, it's going to be too late. So here's what our farce looks like. It is homogenous. There is a density to it. It's ultra sticky. And this is absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and get it into a casing. All right, so for these sheep casings, we're going to be using a half inch stuffing horn. That's the perfect size for a sheep casing. If you go too big, you're going to end up having casing problems and it's just a giant mess. And just like a regular sausage, we just want to minimize the amount of air pockets that we have. With an emulsified farce, though, it is a little more complicated, but just do the best that you can. Once it's packed in there nice and tight, let's get that onto its base, load up that casing, and get it stuffed. And there it is. Our sausage is completely cased with that five pound sausage stuffer from the sausage maker. No problemo. And we're going to make seven and a half inch links. These are going to be just a little bit longer than our hot dog buns. And that's the beautiful thing about making your own sausages. So let's pinch it and twist it three times forward. Here we go. One, two, three. And there's our first sausage. We're going to find our mark on our tray, seven and a half inches, and we're going to pinch it and twist it three times backwards. We're going to continue to do that till we're completely done, and there it goes. Now, I am going to find any air pockets and prick them out with a sausage pricker. You could use a needle, and just removing the air pockets is sufficient for emulsified sausages. You don't really have to over prick. All right, now that we're done, we are ready to cook. Now, we can do this because we used a cure accelerator in the recipe. If you didn't use a cure accelerator, you're gonna to wanna to let these hang out in your refrigerator overnight. And you do wanna cover them so that they don't dry out. We're gonna be smoking these sausages because the Vienna beef typically has that beautiful hickory flavor. Lots of different ways to cook your sausage though. And notice we're gonna do this a little bit differently. We're not gonna let that casing dry out like we typically would. Matter of fact, in that wood box, we're going to add a tray of steaming hot water, right? So this just came off the stove. It was boiling. That's in that wood box. So that's going to be sitting right above that burner. Let's go ahead and turn on our smoker. And for this sausage, we're going to keep it super simple. So we're not going to do a bunch of steps like we normally would with our other smoked sausage. Let me pull up the app so that you can see what it looks like. And as you can see here, there is literally just one step, 175 Fahrenheit until we get to an internal of 140 degrees F. And that is it. So there we go. Let's go ahead and start applying smoke. We're using hickory pellets. You could also use a combination of pellets and wood chips. This is the Bella's cold smoke generator. Absolutely brilliant unit for adding extra smoke in your smoker. And that's it. Our temperature is set. Our humidity and our steam is going to be going. Let's go ahead and shut that down. And I'm going to check back on these sausages in just a little bit and see how it looks. And there it is. There's our hickory smoked Vienna beef dogs ready to go. All we got to do now is cool these off and set them in an icy water bath. This is going to rapidly chill your emulsified sausage. You want to keep it in that water bath till the temperature gets below 100 F, which shouldn't take very long, being that they were only cooked to 140. And at this point, you are done. You could take them out of this water, let them bloom for a couple hours. That would be beautiful. Magnify the color. You can refrigerate them. You can vacuum seal them and freeze them for long-term storage. Or you can go ahead and eat one up. What we're going to do now is go ahead and make the buns. This is a poppy seed bun. Let me show you how to do it. We're going to start with some warm water. We're next going to come in with some salt and sugar and then some active dry yeast. Give that a little whisk. At this point, you can let it get all bubbly before you add the rest of your ingredients. I don't find the need, so I'm going to come back in with a couple egg yolks. We also have melted butter, and we're going to be using hard flour for this recipe. I am going to whisk that just a tiny little bit to help incorporate that 
while I add the rest of my flour. And then we're going to add our non-fat milk powder. This is the same ingredient that we use in our sausage making process. This is a high heat non-fat dry milk. Absolutely brilliant for baking. Let's go ahead and get all those ingredients into our KitchenAid stand mixer. We're using the dough hook attachment and we're going to knead this until we get a smooth dough. If you feel like it's too sticky, you can add a little bit of flour, but don't add too much. I've calculated the recipe almost to perfection. So this is what it's going to look like when you're done. Notice that it's sticking to the bottom, but it comes out very, very easy. And when we turn that onto our cutting board, add a tiny bit of flour, finish kneading by hand to form a smooth dough ball. And this is what it should look like. If you give it a little press right in the middle, that indentation should bounce back one more time. There we go. Now you can take your dough ball and place it into a container that's been sprayed with neutral oil. We are going to cover it so it doesn't dry out. And you want to let it rise till it doubles in size. This could take anywhere from 60 minutes to two hours, depending on the temperature of your room. This is what it looks like once it's done. And we're going to turn this out onto our cutting board. What I like to do at this stage is just weigh that entire ball of dough just to see what we're looking at. I'm going to take the weight, which in this case is 812 grams, and divide that into 11 equal portions. You most certainly don't have to do that. You can just grab handfuls of it and form these into whatever size buns you want, but I like the precision and the uniformity. So when we take 812 divided by 11 ends up being about 73 grams per bun, and I find that to be a perfect size. So by the end of this video, you're going to see what a 73 gram bun looks like, and you can decide if you want to make yours a little bigger or a little smaller. Not a big deal. Once our buns have been measured, they're going to look a little something like this, a little rectangular blob. What some people do is they'll take some flour and they'll put it on their cutting board, but I don't particularly recommend that with this recipe because you're going to use the friction of the cutting board to make your little balls. Take all the edges, fold them into themselves, and using the palm of your hand in a circular motion, bouncing off the inside of your thumb and the inside of all your fingers, you're going to make beautiful little balls. And so that's all you're going to do. It takes about one second of practice before you get it. Trust me, it's an absolutely brilliant little technique. And you're going to place the part where everything connects at the bottom face down. All right, so let's go ahead and do one more so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to fold all the edges in on themselves. And then we're going to turn that side onto the bottom. And then we're going to start rolling it. Just like that. Because you're working with the friction of the table, the process happens incredibly fast. Now that we're done, we're going to cover these with cling film and let them rise another 10 or 15 minutes. I don't want these to double in size. So check on them often. You know, sooner is better. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like once they're finished. And here it is. We did get a little rise, but not too much. Let me show you how to form the buns. Notice I took those little balls of dough off the tray. I'm going to flip them upside down and I'm going to degas them. So basically we're just getting rid of all those little gas pockets inside that little dough ball. We're going to flatten it out into a rectangle. At this point, starting from the top, start rolling the dough onto itself in tight little rolls towards you. And with the thumbs, push the newly rolled dough away. That's going to help tighten everything together. And you're going to continue to do that until you have one solid roll. This is your bun. And at this point, we just want to form it and shape it. I am going to pinch the edges just like so and then gently roll it. That's going to help just tighten everything up, get everything nice and formed. I do want to make sure that my crease is facing down when I'm finished. And I don't want the entire bun to be more than six inches long. That's about perfect for me. This is what our bun's going to look like ready for the final rise. And when I place this onto our baking tray, I do want the seam side down. I typically like to leave about three quarters of an inch between each bun. And this is so that when they rise, the edges slightly touch, giving you a nice soft sided bun, which is what I personally like. I am going to spray this with a little cooking spray, and that's going to keep the cling film from sticking to the top. No worries there. And now for our final rise, cover them with cling film or another tin, whatever you want, so they don't dry out and let them rise for anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how hot your kitchen is. And all I'm looking for is for these buns to get big enough to where they start touching each other, at which point we can go ahead and give them a beautiful egg wash and a poppy seed coating. And this is what our buns look like roughly 45 minutes later. My kitchen is pretty hot. Notice that they're just starting to touch each other, and that is perfect. My egg wash consists of a medium-sized egg with a little cream. You can find the recipe in the description box below. Let's go ahead and give that a little mix. Then coat the top of each one of your buns with that beautiful egg wash. Once you're done, go ahead and top it with poppy seed. You can add as much or as little as you like. And this looks just about perfect for me. Let's go ahead and bake it 350 for 35 minutes. And this is what our final product looks like. Absolutely amazing. 
All right, folks, I just got to know who in the world is still with me. Give this video a great big thumbs up if you've hung in there. You guys are seriously committed to the emulsified sausage. Look at this. We've got our smoked Vienna beef, slightly larger than our bun. I'm loving that. You could cook this literally any way you want. Boil it, poach it, grill it, bake it, fry it. It don't really matter. I'm not going to show you how to cook it. You know how to do that. There it is already done. So let's go ahead and assemble this Chai Town dog. I did heat the bun up in the oven, and then I went ahead and wrapped it in a bag to give it that steamed quality. That's going to really kind of soften it up and get it ready for all these magnificent ingredients. And here we go. Let's go ahead and open this bag up. It feels nice and soft at this point. And I got to tell you, this buttery poppy seed bun smells so good. Look at that texture. All right, let's make a hot dog. All right, folks, we've got our Vienna beef sausage dressed up like a Chai Town hot dog. And this dog looks incredible. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Reminds me of the time that we spent in Chicago. Now, if you happen to make these buns, and I highly suggest that you do, after you bake them uh, and get them nice and warm, place them in that plastic bag, tie it off, and let that steam soften them up. That's going to make the bun a lot more manageable when you pile it full of your amazing ingredients. So, all right, let's go ahead and give it a taste. One Chicago hot dog going in. Wow. I'm kind of beside myself right now. That is absolutely spectacular. The flavors are not only incredibly nostalgic, but they're ultra fresh. The hot dog is smoky with that beautiful hickory smoke. It is snappy, it's tender, it is juicy, right? The ingredients in this dog, what can I say? They're ultra fresh. And then the bun, it's buttery, it's soft, it's incredible. Hmm. Wow, that is good. Let me just go in for one more bite. Mm. Let's cut into the hot dog by itself so that you can see what's going on. I'm going to do a diagonal cut right there. Yep. Check that out. See those little holes? Those are called mechanical openings. And when we make hot dogs at home, this is what we can expect because commercially they use big vacuum sealing machines to suck all the air out of the hot dogs. Uh, but unless you have like chamber vacs or things like that, you, uh, you won't be able to get the air pockets out, which is not that big a deal. Let's just give the hot dog by itself a quick taste. Mm. Nice snappy casing, beautiful flavor, absolutely amazing, and I hope you get a chance to make it. All right, so here's the deal. Emulsified sausages are some of the most challenging and difficult sausages to make. You got to really pay attention to the finer details in all the steps, and at the end of the day, you kind of need the right equipment. If you have any questions about this recipe or the process of making an emulsified sausage, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, was entertained by it, or you got anything out of it in any way, drop me a great big thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, you caught us right smack dab in the middle of a sausage celebration where we upload a brand new video every day through the month of October. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put a playlist so you can get caught up from the very beginning. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>